welcome to part one of a, a series of Revit tutorials that I'm putting together. My name is Matthew Joy. I'm an architect in the Colorado Denver metro area and also a teacher of Revit and AutoCAD at a high school in Denver Public Schools. Um, this series is going to be taking us through what is actually an older tutorial um, in Revit building what is essentially this house um, at a, a slightly lower detail. Um, I like this tutorial in that it tends to give us a lot of the basic understanding of Revit and sort of the platform that we're using, but um, it's it's really built for a much earlier version, but what I've done is modified it so that we can use it in what is now Revit Architecture 2012. So before we begin, I wanted to sort of go over some of the platform. Here is where you see, you'll see the drawing space. Uh, over on the on the on the left, you'll see what is called the properties window. Properties about the different materials, the different objects and components within the model. Below the properties window is the project browser, where we'll see the different views, the different sheets that we set up. Uh, above both of these two windows is what I call the ribbon. Sometimes it's called the design bar. This is where our tools are. Above that bar are the tabs. If you click on each one of these tabs, they show up with different tools. This is the same format you'll see in AutoCAD, Navisworks, Inventor, all the different Autodesk programs. Above the ribbon is what is called the Quick Access Toolbar. A lot of the similar tools you would see in a lot of uh, programs out on the market today. Um, you can adjust these Quick Access tools to be things that you use a lot more often. Um, I tend not to mess around with them, but I like to use the open and save tools quite a bit. If you click on the purple R up in the left hand corner you'll see there are a number of other functions as well and we'll get to those in a li little bit later. Um, right below the design bar or the ribbon is what is called the options bar. Um, when you click on a number of tools here, if I click on wall for example, you see that there are different other modifications that come up within that green options bar below the toolbar, below the, below the ribbon. And lastly, um, there are two things at the bottom of your screen. The view control bar, down at the very bottom of this window, you can see it down here. There's different views and things we can change to modify the views that we're seeing. And then the command line, which will show you what actually is happening when you're pressing some of the tools in the window. So again, this is the house we're gonna be taking a look at. You can see if I rotate it around a little bit. And then we have the view cube up in the upper right hand corner. I tend not to use the view cube because there are some other functionalities you can use with your mouse to rotate around this model. So I'm going to close this window up and we will see what happens when you open up Revit for the first time. You have some options. You do have the basic sample project which you can open up this final model at the uh, um, to see what it looks like. Or um, what we can do right now is we're going to go to new project. So we just click on the new button here. And we'll create a new Revit project file. And as with any project, I like to save it right away. So if I go up to the upper left hand corner, my purple R, we can go right to save as. And we're going to save this as a project. We'll get to the other categories here, family, template, and library at a later date. But for now, we'll just save this as a project. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and save it to my desktop, project one, we'll just call it. So here's our project right now. Again, this is the drawing space. And then these are the, you see the elevation tags or that, that right now we're in a plan. If you look over in your project browser, you can see how things are laid out right now. You can see that level one is highlighted in bold there. And that means we're in the level one plan right now. Obviously we haven't drawn anything yet, so there's nothing in there. But before we begin that, we're going to go ahead and click into our south elevation. Now over on the left, under elevations, you can see that I already have my east, north, south, and west elevations are in there. Now Revit is a parametric modeler, so as you model things in one view, they show up in your other view. So for example, I have these elevation tags on my plan view, which means I've built them already. And they're already built stock within the Revit program when you open up that new file. And what that means is they've already created these elevations. So we're gonna double click on the south elevation. And you can see I've already got two elevation tags here, level one and level two. So those are my two floors that have already been built for me in the default Revit file. 
<coughs> but of course there is nothing there yet. So what we can do, using the wheel on your mouse, you can zoom in and out, similar to what you would zoom in AutoCAD. If I put my mouse over level 1 and level 2 and scroll in, it'll zoom in right on that area. So zoom in on these two levels, level 1 and level 2, and what we're going to do is rename these levels. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take level 1 and rename it to say 00 Foundation. So if I click on level 1, click on it one more time, or you can kind of double click on that, and we're going to type it in 00 Foundation and hit enter. When you hit enter once this dialog box pops up, would you like to rename corresponding views? You want to click yes there. You'll notice that when I click yes, it renamed 00, zero Foundation, then over on the left in our project browser you can see that it renamed our ceiling plan as well, 00, zero Foundation. So that's important if you want to make uh, a level and you want it to rename the corresponding views, you click yes. Sometimes you actually want to make a level that's like the top of a parapet where you wouldn't actually want a plan view and you would make sure to not rename those corresponding levels. So we'll do the same thing for level 2. We're going to rename it. 0, 1, lower level. Hit enter. Rename those corresponding views, and there you have it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add two more levels to this. So zoom out a little bit. And if you push down on your wheel, it turns into the pan button. So you can move your drawing down a little bit. So next what we're going to do is we're going to add a level. So if you look up in your ribbon, click on the Home tab, and over on the far left you'll see the Level button in the Datum category. Now if I click on Level, you'll see that everything turns green in the ribbon that we're, we're using the, the tools, and then below it is the green options bar. So right now there's two draw tools. One is the regular draw line tool, and the other one is a green line with an arrow over it. That's the pick lines tool. Now we're going to use the pick lines tool and then in the green options bar below the ribbon we're going to change our offset to 10 feet. Right now it's set at 0 feet. So now that it's set at 10 feet, if I move my arrow down over the top of my lower level line, you can see that it wants to add a level either above or below based on that blue dashed line that, that appears. Now we're going to add a level that's 10 feet above this 01 lower level. So once you put your mouse on there and you see the blue dashed line, you just click on that lower level and it adds a level here. So we'll do one there and we'll do one more right at top level 3. Make sure that that blue dashed line appears above the level 3 line. And there you have level 4. Now we're at a very important part in how you, how you manipulate these drawings. Now if I was to to continue to click on my screen, it would add more levels. What's always important is if you remember in AutoCAD, it's the escape button's your best friend. To get out of a command, you can hit escape. You can do the same thing here in Revit, but um, ideally you want to go up to your ribbon on the far left and click the modify button. What that will do is get you out of the command and back to sort of a default setting. Okay, so now we have this these four different levels. We're going to first rename our level 3 and level 4. Let's rename level 3 to say O2 entry level and rename those corresponding views. Now I'm not capitalizing these names. You can if you would like to. Whatever your standard practice in your firm is, is perfectly fine. And then level 4, we're going to label it O3 roof. So there are four elevation tags for our four different levels. Now you might have guessed that because we were able to change the name of the levels, we can also change exactly where those levels exist off of grade. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually change their elevation height. So for 00, zero foundation, instead of clicking on the label, click on the actual elevation. Click on 0, double click if you want to, to get in there. I sometimes click slowly just to make sure I've selected the right part of that elevation tag. So I've selected 0 feet. I'm going to change that to negative 14 feet and hit enter. And it drops our elevation down to negative 14 feet. And O1 lower level, we're going to change it from 10 feet to negative 10 feet. Hit enter. 
O2 entry level, we're going to change from 20 feet to zero. And your O3 roof will change from 30 feet to 10 feet. So now we have our four different elevations of our house all set for us.